Hey guys, it's the Dude with Tangent. Today we're going to look at how graphing and sine and cosine functions uh, could help us graph someone's blood pressure. So we have this problem. It tells us that we have an individual whose blood pressure is oscillating 20 above and below 100, which means that their blood pressure is 120 over 80. And we are looking to find the blood pressure uh, given the time in seconds, which will be t. It tells us that the period for this is going to be one second. Okay? So they give us a formula to find the blood pressure at any given interval. They say P, which is mean to pressure, equals 100 plus 20 times sine of 2 pi T, where T is going to be our time in seconds. Okay? So what we want to do is take uh, these values that we have here, uh, plug them into our equation, and find out what we would get for t at each one of these given intervals. So if we take 0 and plug it into our equation, we're going to get a blood pressure of 100. So at the start of this, their blood pressure is sitting at 100. As we move to 0.25, a quarter of a second, if we plug that in, we're going to see that their blood pressure rises to 120. If we plug in 0.5, we're going to see that their blood pressure has dropped back down to 100. If we plug in 0.75 for T, we're going to see that their blood pressure has continued to go down until it's at 80. And then if we plug 1 in for T, we'll see that the blood pressure has risen back to its original 100. All right, so we can graph this uh, on our standard XY coordinate plane. So this is not going to be like the sine graph or cosine graph that we did before. So I'm not going to be going from 1 to negative 1 and 0 to 2 pi going to have to use the information given. So uh, it's saying that we are starting at 100 and the blood pressure is oscillating 20 above and 20 below. So that means this line here is going to be 100. Now a little bit later on uh, we'll learn about vertical shifts uh, and amplitude and stuff like that, but we haven't quite gotten to that part of the lesson. This really just wants us to focus more on critical thinking and our ability to solve problems uh, without having this information readily available. So if we go 20 above 100, that's going to put us at 120 for our maximum. And if we go 20 below, it's going to put us at 80 for my minimum. And right, so that period is one second, so I'm going to come out here, and I'm going to put 1 at the very end. And I'm going to put a half waypoint, which will be 0.5. And then I could come in here and label 0.25. And then I could label 0.75 as my two quarter marks. So now we just want to graph this person's blood pressure. So I just go to my two chart that I've made. At time zero, which will be here on the y-axis, we're at 100. So I'll just put a dot there. So at 0.25, we've risen to 120. At 0.5, we've gone back to 100. At 0.75, we'll be at 80. And at one second, we'll be back at 100. So if we connect this, we see we get a nice sine curve, which is good because the problem told us that we were going to be using a sine function. However, even if you did not have that information readily available, if you looked at this and saw that it started at zero and moved this way, we could uh, probably correctly predict that it was going to be a sine curve that this blood pressure would be modeling. And so from this, you could find out um, what the person's maximum blood pressure is. It's going to be 120. Uh, the minimum amount would be 80. Uh, we know that every second it's going to fluctuate between these and come back to uh, its original mark of 100. So this is how you could use a sine or cosine function to model some real world data. So thank you guys for watching. Keep, um, keep watching and I'll have some videos posted soon uh, dealing with amplitude and period change. So that'll be sometime early next week. Have a good day.